where I get to have some great conversation with some amazing people. And today is no different except for, you know, not only has she released something on yesterday that she's going to talk about, we have with us Butter B. Rocka. How are you? Did I pronounce that right? You did. I am doing okay. pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So tell everybody about yourself. Yeah, definitely. My name is Butterby Rocca. I'm an international recording artist. I'm an Amazon bestselling author, amongst a whole other thing, a lot of other things. Okay, so what are you unapologetic about in this moment? In this moment, I am unapologetic about my release. I am unapologetic about being free and just doing me. Okay, so what what is this release? What what did you release? I released a new single today called strange love okay um and what is that about oh my god so you know love is messy love is unapologetic you know love has a lot of twists and turns and heels and everything and there's no straight line to it love is strange and so we went on this journey in the music video it takes you on a journey of really discovering, you know, things. And it's it's a very fun tune that I cannot wait for you guys to see. Okay, so so what do you hope people get out of this this new single? What what are you hoping resonates with people? I think it's going to, I think what's really going to resonate is that it's going to take you back, you know, back to a time when music was, was really, really cool. You know, it's straight up ATL all day, oh. you know? okay. <laughs> all day ATL. So when you hear it, you're going to be like, it's going to make you reminisce and you're going to be like, oh yeah. But it's reminiscing with a twist of, you know, the new school and the old school, you know? So it's an R and B, or is it like it's, a mixture of hip hop and R and B? Because you know, so many it's it's hard to have R and B now because R and B have become like a form of hip hop. So right, you're saying it gives you that old school feel. So are you taking us back to some old R and B music? Actually, it's it's considered to be alternative pop soul. Ooh, yeah, yeah, that. yeah. Oh yeah, see now I can't wait because I mean I think that's you know you're breaking ground. So how does the, how does that make what was that process like? Before I ask you, how does it make you feel to be doing something so different? What was the process like? You know the music the music just hits you. You know and you never know how how you're gonna flow when you are, are creating you know music and everything. The track was produced by. B um, Luna Man, who's based in Belgium, and me and my writing partner, who was also an artist, Homer Mack, we got into the lab and, you know, what's so crazy is we both went into our own little corners, you know, writing what we hear on the verses. And then when we finally came together, it was crazy that what we was feeling and without even saying what we was, you know, we didn't have a subject or anything, but when we came back, we was on the same lane, you know, so that was really, really cool. Yeah. Okay, so then how how did it feel when you know just knowing that you're mixing all of these different genres together? It feels real good because you know people want to put people in a box, and you don't have to be in a box. You know, someone else's opinion of you doesn't have to be your own. You know, and I think that music is a free. You know, music is free, and you should be able to express yourself however you want to express yourself. Okay, and you apparently clearly expressed yourself <laughs> very well <laughs> in, in this new single to be able to have this mixture. And so you also said you're an author, a best-selling Amazon author. So what, what book? It's called you, Fear of Failure, Fear of Not Trying. Ooh, what is that about? That's super it, deep. It, it is about my journey in the music industry. It's about the rejections. It's about, you know, going through a divorce, raising kids on your own losing faith in yourself, but then coming to a point where you're like, no, you know, someone else's opinion does not define who I am or whose I am. You know what I mean? And then I just had to get to a point where I was like, you know, I have to bet on myself. And and I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know how to, you know, I didn't know, but I knew that I had to do something. I always wanted to put out a project. Back in the day, I had two deals on the table one with Warner Brothers and one with Sony. And I was headed to my attorney's office, Mr. Vernon Slaughter with Cat Smith and Cohen. And I got into a car accident and that car accident left me drinking from a straw for six months. I have titanium plates in my face and 
I had stitches and it was really crazy. And it took me a long time mentally, you know, to get over that and to come back out. And when I did come back out, you know, it was difficult because the labels um, Warner had revamped. Sony had just signed a young lady that was around my age. And then we went to the third label that was interested in us. And they just flat out told us, you know, at that time they were signing the Britney Spears, the, you know, the teenagers, the 12 and 13 year olds. Here I am, 18, 19. How dare I? <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I didn't miss the boat. <laughs> so it was it was really tough mentally. Um, on top of that, I had a lot of friends. You know how like sometimes when you're on the same playing field. And and then somebody's career, you know, like really takes off. So I've had a couple of friends where we used to do plenty of shows together, studio work together and all this type of stuff. And when I was going through, you know, now not getting these deals and it was a year later and their careers is blowing up. You know, when I finally did come back out, I'm like, OK, well, I don't have the record deals, but my friends are doing real good. I'm still going to bump with them, you know, and mm -hmm. still work with them. And it was it wasn't like that. It was like a pause, you know, it was kind of, they didn't treat me, they didn't treat me differently, but they did. It almost was like, I was like a groupie, but I wasn't a groupie. You know, I was your friend before you became a superstar, you know, type thing. Mm -hmm. And so that uh, between the rejection of the labels and now the rejections of my friends who I used to work with, it really, you know, took a toll on me. And I mean, I just started thinking that, you know, I wasn't good enough. I, it was so many things, mm -hmm. you know, that goes through your mind, self doubt and everything. And you, maybe I am oh, yeah. old at 19, you know, I just, it was so many <laughs> things. It was so many things and, and my world was crushed, you know what I mean? So it took me a long time to to finally say, no, I'm not going to listen to what other people think about me. You know, I know where I see myself. I know what I believe. And I know that God didn't give me this talent to just sit here and not use it. So I finally got to a point where I, you know, released my own project. I didn't know what to do, but I took one step, then the next step, and then the next step, and then door store opening. As a writer, you're either with ASCAP, BMI, or CSAC. I was with CSAC. They put me on their big um, Christmas show. And then from there, that led to me performing in Atlanta at the Wednesday Wind Down in front of 5,000 people. After I got off stage, 10 minutes after I got off stage, I got approached about going over to Africa. And it was all she wrote after that. <laughs> I have literally oh told the world. Yeah. So, you know, the book is about not giving up and overcoming your fears, you know, and and your self doubts and everything like that. So I became an Amazon bestseller within seven hours of my release. Okay, congratulations, congratulations. Well, you're definitely you. a you are definitely a walking testimony, and you know I I can imagine that everything that you're going to do is going to be great. I mean, just absolutely amazing because one, you never gave up on yourself. You said, I'm going to find a way. But then, you know, when you look back in your past and all of these friends that wasn't a part of your level up was still unpurposeful for them, but purposeful for you. Because mm -hmm. a blessing is not a blessing denied. So, mm -hmm. and look at where you are now. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> journey so I'm so glad that you got to not only share your music that's you know newly released but really to talk about your book because your journey is probably a part of why you you know made all these different shifts to become who you are yeah that's so, cool. that's so you know so happy to hear all of this uh, so how can people connect with you how can they get to the song where can they hear it at where can they see this video absolutely you they can go to butter b rocka that's b-u-t-t-a b as in boy r-o-c-k-a i'm on all social media platforms under butter b rocka and you can go to either my website or youtube to see the video strange love of course it's on all digital platforms, Spotify, Pandora, all of those stations and everything. And yeah, you're you're definitely gonna love this video and love the song. Okay, you all check her out. Follow her, connect with her. I'm telling you, I can already see it's gonna be some dynamic stuff going on both now and in the future. 2021 is look, it's already shooting stars for you. So, you know, tune in on the next time of Unapologetic with Dr. G and you never know who I'll have popping in. 
And that was your unapologetic moment.